Welcome, welcome, welcome. It is time, and I know you guys were ready today with the news that <laughs> dropped. All right, we got Rob checked in first at 424. We got Gotti, we got Mark, we got Matt Nagy up in the building, Marcel, C. Givens, Jamie, we got Bull Samson, we got HL Priest and Predator, Jimbo and Gregory, Travis, Matt, Chris, man, everyone's up here, Greg, Sergio, what's going on, y'all? You know, it's been a rough day for us Bears fans here at The Rush, Danny Wasaki's running the show. And one of my favorite people at NBC Sports, all right, is to the screen the side of me. Follow him, one, Alex Shapiro, Alex Shapiro NBCS, for all of his articles. Also follow him, Twitter. Yo, Twitter is live now. I was I was looking at your views. I was like, look at my man right there. Look at the views. It's game time now, man. Now, now we're in the real football oh. stuff. So you know it. I mean, we got offensive line updates. We got Roquan Smith updates. We got Justin. F- I mean. You gotta be, you gotta be tweeting up a storm with all this stuff going on. We got real football going on. You kidding me? Yep. What's up, HL? So listen, y'all. You know what we're leading off with today, everyone. All right, someone, a player that's been near and dear to our hearts. Roquan Smith's contract dispute with the Bears has been a major training camp storyline. Now the Bears Pro Bowler has requested a trade and called out Bears general manager Ryan Poles. What does this mean for the Bears? And do you think Ryan Poles and Roquan will find a way to work this out? Or is this the last we've seen of Roquan in the Bears jersey, Alex? End of the day, yes, I still believe the Bears and Roquan Smith are going to come to an agreement on a contract extension. I just think that's what makes the most sense for both parties, to be honest. Um, I believe this was a negotiating tactic mm-hmm. by Roquan. I mean, he left in that line about, I haven't spoken to the McCaskies, and maybe they can salvage us, which – To me, it's kind of crazy and maybe not the best negotiating strategy on his part. You know, like, hey, why don't you talk to them before going to the public if you wanted to use that as a negotiating tactic? But anyways, that's another here nor there. Ultimately, I believe, yes, Roquan Smith and the Bears will come to agreement because you got to remember, Roquan Smith is his own agent. So now that he's requested this trade, does he have to start calling more GMs? And in addition to working out a trade, with these GMs, I mean, obviously, Ryan Poles is going to work out the trade, but he's going to have to talk to these GMs about a contract extension, you know? So not only is he now negotiating with just Ryan Poles, is he negotiating with all of these other teams? Is he just calling up GMs all day? I don't know. That seems like it would be a tough task for him um, logistically. But th- that aside, I-, I think it makes the most sense for both parties to get a deal done. I'm totally with you. Um, I even said last week, that I didn't expect for it to go this far, to be honest with you. You hit it on the head. I think this is a negotiation tactic and one he should use. It's it's part of something in his repertoire. So it lets us know we're ticking down to the point where frustration has started to set in to some degree. But yeah, the, the McCaskey part tells you that we're not over the bridge just yet as far as his return. You know, like if you're like, man, listen, I want to get out of here, but the boss boss, maybe they can fix this. <laughs> That's not you really wanting to get out of here. Because when you really want to get out, you're like, I don't care who's trying to talk to me. I want out. I'm done with this situation. And it also, it's funny because, and again, once this contract is signed, it won't matter as much, but you're also still negotiating with Ryan Poles because you're still going to be working for him if you sign the contract, regardless if you, the McCaskies have to come in and do something else. So uh, to me, it was just him trying to put some pressure on Poles because if you just look at the chat, most people are saying pay him. There are a few people you see, HL says bye-bye. I mean, again, now, one of the things that I said a lot here, you know what I'm saying, ab- about paying an off-ball uh, linebacker, how – I pay Roquan, but it's still in the back of my mind. You know what I'm saying? But when you're in this 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 defense, you know you need a guy like him at weak side to flourish. You know, yeah, so exactly. it's and and if it, and I think even more where and this I could still be wrong. This could they could reach uh they could it could get to the point where they don't feel like or he doesn't feel like I'm not coming back because the number isn't higher than the last couple of guys that got signed, and I'm not, I'm not going to settle for that disrespect. But I would think Matty Berflus coming from. Indianapolis, all right, with Leonard, 
would want to have the same situation as far as an outstanding weak side guy to be one of the focal points of this defense, especially, you know, you guys pointed out to me Friday at camp, especially with someone like Justin Jones get a pop. And so maybe the question of three technique isn't as big of a question. And especially if Robert Quinn can do what he needs to do, you, you got a lot of the building blocks to this defense. So why would you give one up? And to this too, they're rebuilding, but they got enough money to pay somebody, you know, like, I mean, it's yeah. like, it's just him. So it'd be different if three other guys were up, they were important were up for contracts, and then perhaps you start had to figure out who was more valuable. It's just him. But again, I do think representing yourself, you you run into issues like this because you hear some things that you perhaps wouldn't have heard that your agent wouldn't have necessarily told you about yeah. the negotiations from the opposite side. Yeah. In terms of having money to sign guys, I mean, you do have to remember Jim Fields is going to need a contract one of these days. Darnell Mooney's going to need a contract. Jalen Johnson's going to need a contract. They still got to decide what they want to do with David Montgomery. But going back to the importance of the defense, I mean, someone asked Matt Eberflus point blank, like, yo, do you just tell Ryan Poles, hey, uh, the will is really, really important in my defense. Can we get this done? And he's like, it's been very well documented how important the will is in our scheme. It's the three tech. It's the outside rushing linebacker. It's the will. It's the nickel. So, yes, he is an important cog. Everybody knows that. Okay, that, that's. I'm happy that you, you said that because we definitely need to hear that over here, Alex. That's, that's why you get paid the big bucks. All right, Roquan Smith requested a trade. Of course, we all know from the Bears in an open letter that we all read this morning. In it, Roquan called out the Chicago Bears general manager, Ryan Poles. He said he was disappointed and didn't want to trade. He wants to be a Chicago Bear. Roquan revealed he is not talking to his McCaskies, just as Alex alluded to a second ago. But maybe they can salvage this. Is this a bad look, Alex? I'm sorry, for Ryan Poles. No, I think it's a bad look for Roquan Smith, if anybody. I think Ryan Poles did the right thing by getting out in front of it and addressing the media today. He was not scheduled to talk to us. And it was a bit of a surprise when he walked through those doors. I mean, he said, he told us he was going to make himself a little bit more available than Ryan Pace did uh, in the previous regime. And, and we've already seen that, right? We've seen him at the combine and at the draft and on report day. And, and those things are normal. But now this is the first time where this was a story. He came out, he got in front of it. And he said, in my opinion, all the right things, which is we still love Roquan Smith, the player. We still love Roquan Smith, the person. It is not our intention to trade him. We want to get a deal done. And he made it clear just in the Ian Rappaport report. There's this detail that Roquan was offended about the de-escalators in the contract. And he was offended that in terms of actual salary, he wouldn't be the highest paid linebacker. Uh, Ryan Poles made a point to say there were some record breaking elements in our offer that we thought would show how much we value Roquan. Obviously, that wasn't the case. but. No, I think Ryan Poles did all of the right things today. And to me, you know, again, I'm going back to Roquan Smith not having an agent. It really complicates things. But to me, it's a bad look. And it, it comes down to that McCaskey thing. It's like George McCaskey is available. We we see him at training camp. He's out there. I'm sure his door is open if if Roquan Smith wanted to talk to him. And, and to me, it's like, why, why would you make that point? Why wouldn't you talk to the owner before? before putting this out there. And I I understand it's a negotiating tactic and all that, but no, I do not think it's Ryan Poles who has egg on his face at the end of the day, especially after what we heard from Poles. I'm in total agreement. Um, listen, if they end up trading him or dependent, and again, I'm not saying they are, depending on what they receive, then we will roast Ryan Poles if, it's, if it's, mm -hmm. he deserves to be roasted. But right now, this is Roquan again, De deploying the tactic and just like you said as far as you can talk to the McCaskies if necessary and this too was Ryan Pace and I'm not trying to compare Ryan Poles and Ryan Pace at all especially with how now Ryan Pace has a negative connotation because of the failures that happened during his regime but we were a little upset that he took an off by linebacker and the kid held out but but one it was because we didn't get Quentin Nelson and we thought we were going to really Quentin Nelson was going to fall to the Bears for the most part right mm -hmm, but yeah. once Roquan and remember it was because of the later years in his contract, the language of those years that Roquan was holding out. Yep. Roquan came and kicked butt, and we didn't care. So mm -hmm. for us, also, don't forget this. Les Brick was just a minute away from being a 49er, y'all. 
Do we not just forget that he was out the door basically until some tampering and someone may have told something, all right, as far as the 49ers deal? Like we've seen this happen. So I don't necessarily want to make this too, too much about nothing to a certain degree. Yeah. If, if he's traded, yes, then we have to revisit what, what is mm -hmm. Ryan Poe's doing again. It has to do with the equity. But right now, this is just a contract negotiation. Now, I mean, did I want to see it? Danny alluded to it. Did I want to see it as early in this morning when I woke up? No, but he 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 left enough olive olive branches to where I was. I'm not worried to this point that the the, the house is burned down and there's no way we're going to be to repair it. In my opinion, and along those lines, when a deal gets done, if a deal gets done, all of this is forgotten. Exactly. If the deal gets done next week or even one week before the regular season and Roquan Smith is out there playing the will linebacker, tackling a lot of ball carriers, all of this, all of this is forgotten. We almost never talk about Roquan Smith's holdout in his rookie season until this hold in started again. Right. I mean, that was history. That was old news. That was a footnote. It was completely unthought of until it's like, oh, wait, he's, he's doing the hold in thing again. So, yeah, if a deal gets done, we're all going to forget about it. No, Jeremy water under the bridge Jeremy had a good one mm -hmm. what's a good trade what's a good deal for Roquan Smith if he was traded in your opinion Alex I think if you're Ryan Pulse you have to try and get a first round draft pick I don't know that they will get a first round draft pick just because this has gotten ugly but I think that's where you have to try just because he can come in and if you are playing the style of defense where you need an off ball linebacker uh he can come in and probably make any team, any contender better. And, uh, you know, we were doing a little bit of an exercise. Uh, Josh Schrock and I were doing this. Like, who is a contender that may have a first? Uh, is it the Miami Dolphins who are going all in, even though they just lost a first-round draft pick? What about the Philadelphia Eagles? The Rams don't have one, so you can count the Rams out. But I think you can go down the line, and you can come up with several suitors who Ryan or Roquan Smith, he would make their team better. So yeah, see if you can get a first round draft pick. I'm with you. A first round pick. Um, that's where I would like to begin when it comes to Roquan. I think the only knock, and this happens all the time. So it's not a real knock. You're paying him as soon as you're trading for him. You know what I'm saying? So it's not one, whoever team is making that deal, you're making that deal. And then you're giving him a hundred mil plus, you know what I'm saying? So that could maybe be that could maybe have teams a little bit like, hold on, let me try to see if the second rounder will fly. But I'm with you. The player this good and this young still, it's not like he's 29, 30. You know, then I could see a, a second rounder being the top asking price. But with the player this young, hasn't really oh, had. Exactly. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Just entering his prime. He's really just entering his prime. And he's already so, so good. I mean, it almost seems like all pro seasons are his floor. And that's why I believe that's why I believe you can maybe get that first round draft pick. It's not trading for a Khalil Mack who has been dominant for a very long time, but is at the latter ages of his career. It's not trading for a Von Miller. Again, been dominant for a very long time, been a Super Bowl MVP and all that, but is now at the latter stages of his career. This is a dude who is still probably ascending. And if you get him in the right spot, I mean, real difference maker on the field. I'm with you, Jimbo. I doubt he's going anywhere. Last question. Um, we're going to talk a little bit about the Chicago Bears depth chart. Another wide receiver went down in practice. This time it was David Moore. He had to be carted off the field. Moore as to a growing a growing list of injured players at wide receiver with Byron Pringle and Keel Harry. What is your panic level at wide out, Alex? And should the Bears explore possibilities of an OBJ or Miami's Preston Williams? Um, I don't think LBJ is going to happen. I, like I have that almost as close to 0% <laughs> as we can get yes. without saying it's absolutely 0%. Preston Williams, I'm going to be honest. I have not watched enough Preston Williams tape in my day to have a real educated opinion on whether he's going to be a fit on this Bears team. But I guess he would because he's a warm body. Um, <laughs> I wouldn't say I'm panicking, but it's definitely concerning that you know it, it's thin and there's a lot of guys who, who are down. Now, Valus Jones is technically a day-to-day. -day. Dante Pettis is a day-to-day. -day. So these guys can come to practice, you know, tomorrow they could show up. But I believe by the end of the day today, there were five or, yeah, five injured wide receivers and eight active wide receivers, which is obviously eight guys to fill reps for three teams. It's not a lot of, not a lot of work. Those guys are being super busy. I think just overall, we've been down on this group. 
It's a bunch of unproven, a bunch of unproven talent. Even Byron Pringle, right? We were talking about Byron Pringle as the number two and a guy who's going to be out for an extended amount of time. We don't really know what the Bears are going to get out of Brian, Byron Pringle this season. Right. You know, when you look at it now, we're looking at Darnell Mooney and Equinemius St. Brown as, as the number two. We'll see. Here's, here's what I will say. If these guys continue to be out, Valus Jones, Dante Pettis, the, the, the David Moore thing looks like it was going to be an extended. I'm not a doctor, but when you get carted off the field, that to me indicates it might be a little longer injury. It's not going to be a day-to-day -day thing. It may be time to start bringing guys in for a tryouts, uh, looking at the waiver wires, seeing who's getting cut, seeing if there's a fit. Again, I'm not going to speak to OBJ or Preston Williams, but one guy that we spoke about on the Under Center podcast is maybe a Will Fuller. And I know we've Will Fuller comes with his own question marks, injury history, the PED suspension, but it, to me, feels like another low risk, high reward type player like the Nikhil Harry trade, where if you can get him on a league minimum prove it deal and he does manage to stay healthy, he can, he can bring some explosive dynamic playmaking ability to the offense. So I wouldn't be surprised if, if we start seeing wide receivers trying out for the bears, we've seen all sorts of tries. We've seen defensive linemen. We've seen linebackers would not be surprised at all. If we saw wide receivers added to that mix. My panic level is about a seven is eight ish. Oh, um, that's pretty high. You're kind yeah, of because, because one, it's it's everything you said, but it's also the fact that now they're not getting reps with Justin in the new offense. So, like now, all that all the time to build chemistry is gone. And not to say you can't try to build it throughout the season, but these are some guys that are trying to prove it on some prove it deals for the most part. So, and then now I, I felt like if they were just a little nicked up, but out there you wouldn't have to definitely not to say they still shouldn't check out wide receivers. It wouldn't be as pressing as what it is now, but if you want to succeed now where you were kind of like, you know what, we got these guys and it's a bunch of names, but we have a room. You kind of don't have a room depending on how injured these guys are. So you, you may have to call a Will Fuller, you know what I'm saying? Because now like Justin needs guys. I understand they may not be name big name guys, but they, they need guy. He needs guys now, and Ryan, Ryan Poles can't just sit here like we're going to find out what shakes out in the room anymore because guys have shake shooken out basically due to injury. So that's my only concern. And then real quick with Preston Williams, um, this is 2019, 2020, and 2021 receptions: 32, 18, and six. He's been injured. Uh, 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 TDs: three in 2019, four in 2020, and zero in 2021. So. We're going to need somebody a little better than that. All right. If we're going to break yeah, that somebody. Does not move, again, that does not move the needle for me very much now. The Dolphins, that offense has been up and down. And again, like I haven't seen it. So it's it's not to me like why is he not getting the production? I, I want to know why he's not getting the production because that Dolphins offense has not been good for some time. They're all in. They're they're they still don't even know if Tua is the guy, in my opinion. But they exactly. are they are going all in, and exactly. they're gonna, they're going to find out if Tua is the guy this year. I'm with you, HL. I wouldn't have mind having a little Julio here, even though he couldn't practice. But I still love me some Julio Jones, so I wouldn't mind it. So, guys, we're going to be back tomorrow. You know, we're going to be talking more Bears football. So let me give you some shout outs to some. We get we got Demond, we got of course HL Priest. Who else do we got in here? We got Mark Jimbo's in here wilding out. Uh, Gustavo, you crazy? We're out here talking about the me and Alex had to dress, get dressed at wide receiver. Jimbo says Cole Beasley. Man, we don't need any Cole Beasley antics right now, Jimbo. We got Mark, we got Matt Nagy, Jeremy. Um, who else? Greg, Gregory, everybody that's involved in here. We always appreciate it. Sebastian, um, for you all taking a little bit of time. C Givens, you've been in here real good, real heavy today. Taking a little time on your day to talk a little bit of Bears football. We'll be back tomorrow to talk more Bears football for Danny Wasaki, Gabby, Alex, and myself. You all have a good evening, and we will talk to you tomorrow.